Season-long player props are amongst the uh, probably the most fun, you know, stats or numbers or whatever to look at in the preseason, uh, whether you follow the NFL or you're a gambler or DFS or, you know, you're into fantasy football. I think they're one enjoyable, but two, like really helpful to get a gauge on where Vegas has players pegged on. And in my opinion, the preseason numbers are like a really, really easy market to to nail and bring home some revenue. So today what we're going to do is go to the single best place that has these season long player props on prize picks. And I'm going to go through my favorite player props to take on there as they stand right now. There is a lot of numbers and a lot of players to take advantage of that people have not moved on, but they will be moving tremendously. For example, just like a week and a half ago, I ripped this parlay, Jalen Waddell. Under 100 and a half receptions, Deontay Johnson under 100 and a half receptions, and Mark Andrews under 95 and a half receptions. Waddle's number is now down to 87.5. Deontay's down to 90.5, and Andrews is down to 89.5. The season long market is really easy to win on as long as you can control your emotions and take the unders on these players. Most of the numbers that you'll see on prize picks, on wherever you look at them, are baking in best case scenario with 17 games played. The majority of NFL players don't play a full 17 games, so whatever their average per game numbers were need to be boosted up tremendously in order to hit overs on these. So you'll see a theme throughout today's video, a lot of unders. We're going to hit them, we're going to hit them fucking hard, and let's get this fucking bread. Y'all know what to do, let's tuck our shirts in. Flex our traps. I'm going to stop yelling. And as a reminder, of course, we work with prize picks. If you go deposit $10 on their site using our promo code BDGE, not only are they going to match it, $10, $20, $50, $100, up to $100, they're going to match whatever you put down, but you're getting our season-long fantasy football draft guide for free with that. Go to prizepicks.com, go to the app, link down in the description, first-time depositors, $10 or more, use promo code BDGE. And they're going to match you with it. Plus, you're getting access to our season-long draft guide for free. So this video is going to be useful for fantasy football players as well as those that want to pay the mortgage. All right, let's start on that note with some running back touchdown totals that are on the board right now. First one I love, and I talked about A.J. Dillon in yesterday's video, he's at six and a half rushing touchdowns over under for the season. I think he kills it. I think there's a really good chance that we see him flirt with double-digit rushing touchdowns this year. He already out carried Aaron Jones 10 to 6 on the goal line, which are not very high volume numbers overall, 16 carries between two running backs. However, with Devontae Adams gone, their red zone numbers, their red zone scheme is going to have to go extremely fucking run heavy. All right. And if Devontae Adams is not there, it's going to live through AJ Dillon and live through Aaron Jones. I could see Aaron Jones again playing a lot from the slot, especially down in the red zone to get open in those tight spaces, meaning Dillon's going to get a lot of the red zone carries. So he had five last year, I think with a very, very much increased role and just the uh, the absence of Adams, meaning their red zone offense is going to have to dictate or is going to have to go through their running backs. I think Dylan smashes the six and a half over under touchdowns. After Dylan, we have Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He is at six rushing touchdowns, which is crazy to me. He's had four in each of his two career NFL seasons. He's had four in year one. He had four in year two. He is not the goal line back there anymore. He has, you've probably heard me say this stat, but he's had 12 career goal line carries through two years. 12 career, six of them, six of them, came in that very first game they played. You remember that was a fucking on TV, national televised game. He's just getting stuffed and stuffed and stuffed and stuffed on the fucking line of scrimmage over and over again on the goal line. So half of his career goal line carries came on the very first game that he played. He's just not the goal line back there anymore. They'd rather use Jarek McKinnon. They'd rather do fucking weird passes to Travis Kelsey. They have Ronald Jones there now, who's a bigger back than uh, than Clyde Edwards Hilaire is. They have Isaiah Pacheco, who's getting a little bit of hype out there. He's not going to make an impact this year. But if he does, he's also bigger than Clyde. Clyde just, that's just not his role, okay? So for him to go over six touchdowns, for him to score seven rushing touchdowns this year would be very shocking to me. Austin Eckler's the next running back whomst I'm hitting the touchdown total on. Eight and a half, eight and a half rushing touchdowns. He had 12 rushing touchdowns last year. If you look at the career numbers outside of last year, starting back from his rookie year, two, three, three, one rushing touchdowns, 12 last year. Obviously, he got more involved and he's probably still going to be involved heavily in the red zone. But I think with the addition of Isaiah Spiller being a bigger back, they're going to give a lot of the goal line work to him now. I don't think they want Austin Eckler to be the guy who's carrying the rock 70% of the time for this backfield. He didn't even want that. He, he I was listening to a really good podcast today that uh, Roto Pat does over there at NBC, and they interviewed beat reporters from every NFC West team. 
from every AFC West team. And when they brought the Chargers beat reporter on, they were talking about how like he would talk to Austin Eckler at the end of last year. And basically Eckler was begging them to have a second guy that they could put in and use for some of that up the middle work. And they couldn't do it because Larry Roundtree and Joshua Kelly stink. Isaiah Spiller does not stink. And he'll be the second running back there. I think he takes a lot of the goal line carries. I went back and looked at some interesting numbers. So a lot of the over-unders on these prize picks running backs, right? Like if you go to the rushing touchdown tab, you see a lot of guys whose over-under is slated for double digits, right? You have Jonathan Taylor, 13 and a half, Derrick Henry, 13 and a half, Chubb, 10 and a half, Mixon, 10 and a half, Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook all need to go and hit 10 if they want to hit their over. So I wanted a James Conner needs to hit 10 to hit his over. I love the under on that one. So I went back and I wanted to look at, you know, how repeatable are are double digit rushing touchdown numbers because remember these are rushing touchdowns only these are not total total touchdowns right you tell me eight and a half Austin Eckler total touchdowns I'm like sure because he's probably going to get four or five through the air these are just rushing touchdowns so I look back over the last five years dating back to 2016 so you have 2016 17 18 19 20 and I looked at every running back and whether or not they had double digit touchdowns on the ground the following year 30 running backs had double digit touchdowns in that time span only seven of them repeated it so 77 percent of the running backs that had double digit rushing touchdowns touchdown numbers did not end up having double digit rushing touchdown numbers again the following year. It's why I'd be nailing the under on James Conner rushing touchdowns at nine and a half. It's why I would hit the under on Joe Mixon at 10 and a half because he needs to go to 11. Nick Chubb's a guy who's had like eight, eight, 12, 8, 8. So I think the under is pretty safe. I think 10 rushing touchdowns would be a phenomenal year for him. It's realistic, but it's still under 10 and a half. So I love the under on most of these rushing touchdown props because scoring just that many pure touchdowns from the ground is really fucking hard. And let me know while you're watching when when you're on prize picks, of course, make sure you use that promo code BDGE. What plays you like the most? And I know how a lot of y'all work. Again, I know how you fantasy football heads work. You like the overs, but I'm telling you it's a trap because they spread out the 17 games into these statistics without the minus EV prop of missing games throughout the year. So let's move over to some wide receivers. The first over that I love is Cortland Sutton over five and a half touchdowns. Okay. Dude's a baller and every that same uh, beat reporter podcast that I was talking about, which I will link in the description. I really, really high, highly recommend you guys go listen to it. They're doing a great series over there where they're interviewing a beat reporter from each team going division by division. And they talked about how Sutton is the clear like breakout top guy as a wide receiver for Russell Wilson. They even went as far as saying that Jerry Judy's probably going to be the odd man out when there's two wide receiver sets. It's going to be Patrick. It's going to be Sutton. And Judy seems to be the third guy in the pecking order. But Sutton stands to be like the guy in the red zone there. Sutton stands to be the guy attached to Russell Wilson who continuously threw 30 plus touchdowns in an offense that was run heavy, that was slow, that wasn't a high scoring offense. And he was so prolific in the red zone. Like his efficiency numbers in the red zone were top five throughout his entire tenure in Seattle. Cortland Sutton is one of the biggest, probably top, we will be looking back at him as one of the top red zone guys at the end of this year. So five and a half touchdowns attached to Russell Wilson, I feel like is easy money. I also love uh, Michael Pittman at six and a half receiving touchdowns. I will take the over on that because when you look at this offense that I think is going to run really fucking smoothly this year, good old line. Matt Ryan commanding the offense, great running game. They really don't have a lot of weapons on the outside or on the inside. They don't have a tight end of consequence. They don't have a real wide receiver too behind Pittman. Like sure, Campbell and Alec Pierce might be cute, but like Pittman's the only guy really there. And outside of JT, when they get down to the red zone, what other weapons are they using, right? So six and a half touchdowns, I feel like is easy money. And you'll hear me like, I, I continue to say that the under is the easy play for most props. The ones that I take the over for are the ones that I think they're undershooting the total on by at least like two or three touchdowns like if I think Cortland Sutton if I was confident that Cortland Sutton was going to finish with like six touchdowns the over under was five and a half I would probably just take the under but I think Cortland Sutton probably finishes closer to seven eight nine touchdowns I think Michael Pittman probably finishes closer to eight nine ten touchdowns so I'm giving myself a little bit of juice there on how I project these players to you know finish out the year so these guys that I'm taking the over on it's only because I'm really confident they're taking the over I don't it's not like a tiebreaker for me and I'm like I like the player he's athletic I think there's juice to be squeezed out of the over So that's when I would take, you know, the over as opposed to the under the Chargers wide receivers are a really baffling one because they have Mike Williams at six and a half touchdowns who flew over that last year. They have Keenan Allen at seven and a half touchdowns. Okay, Keenan Allen has topped seven and a half touchdowns once in the last eight years. One time in the last eight years, and it was just barely with eight touchdowns. So I have no idea why they have Keenan Allen pegged as the higher touchdown scorer over Mike Williams, but I'm really confident that Mike Williams will go over six and a half touchdowns. Pretty damn confident that Keenan Allen will go under seven and a half touchdowns. So I like the the reverse little swap action there. 
And the last one I will take, I kind of like DK Metcalf under 75 and a half receptions. I think it's just a high number given that again, this offense is going to be slow paced and they're not with Russell Wilson anymore. So it's going to be a combination of Geno Smith and Drew Locke throwing. So he could still see 130 targets, 140 targets. But what happens if only 55% of them are catchable? And, you know, what happens if 35% of those are contested? Or it, it's just the, the math for me doesn't add up. That, you know, to, to hit 80 receptions, you have to be a pretty high volume guy. And Metcalf, I feel like with these, uh, with these shitty quarterbacks is going to be more of like a downfield threat that they take shots to. And... I don't know. I just 75 and a half receptions is, you know, five ish receptions a game. I think that's just a little bit of high number for a guy attached to a quarterback that we have zero confidence in. I think the reception tab is probably one that you will make the most money on as well is rushing touchdowns for me. And then receptions are extremely inflated and they continue to go down. If you had caught this like three, four weeks ago, you would have made some serious fucking money on it. Um, but we're going to be doing these throughout. They're going to put over-unders for preseason games and obviously throughout the season. So make sure you're signed up for prize picks. We're going to be ripping these all season long. Again, use promo code BDG. It'll get you a 100% deposit match, and it'll also get you access to our season-long draft guide, which has our rankings in it for free. If you're looking at the receptions, I know I said I like the unders on a lot. I like CeeDee Lamb over 87 and a half. I like Traylon Burks under 65 and a half. I love Christian Watson under 55 and a half. Christian Watson, again, has missed all summer, right? And it's only been Al Mazard getting hype. I think the running backs are going to get a lot of hype. But Christian Watson at 55 and a half, I think, is a smash on the under. I kind of like Darnell Mooney, 77 and a half over. But yeah, otherwise I'll keep babbling on for, for an hour or so, but I wanted to rip those out because I know a lot of you guys have been signing up for prize picks and thank you for supporting us, of course. This is, it's such a smooth platform. Their app is beautiful, easy to navigate, easy to win money on. So go sign up for prizepicks.com. Let me know what plays y'all love down in the comments below and, uh, and maybe I'll rip them. Maybe we will do some like fan parlays where I team up with some of your favorite picks and we rip them on the next video or something. All right, I'm out of here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed and I'll see y'all tomorrow.